I'm going to give this over to Victoria. Victoria, thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Thanks. So we started with the bonus material. So hopefully uh, you'll all feel inspired to go and make a little gimlet. Uh, but I'm going to cover the gate latch itself and the, the tapered tenon that you use to secure the gate latch to your fence or gate. So the gate latch drawing it calls out either 5 16 or 3 8 material. And I'll be going over 3 8 using 3 8 round for this presentation. Um, it's posted on the California Blacksmith Association website, the calsmith.org. You go to the education uh, certification. Oh, wait, let me turn my laser pointer on. Uh, certification. And then if you scroll down on the certification page, you'll find uh, more on level one. That's what you want to click. You'll see this, the new and improved latch that has the forward leaning hook, which I think is uh, from the Cosira book and maybe a little nicer look uh, and the material that covers the specifications for the staple and then the tenon latch and plate that Becky's going to go over. Just as an aside, I'm using for my present for the footage and when I practice this gate latch, I use this Mr. Volcano Forge. And I just wanted to point that out because it comes with all these items in the kit and it is at a very affordable price point. So if you're thinking about getting a propane forge. This is a great little starter forge. I had no trouble doing any of the forge welds with this. For the latch, you will need a round, we used a rounding hammer and you're gonna need a ball peen. And you wanna make sure that your ball peen is round, not the pointy kind. Some of them come with more of a wedge. They're not very ballish. So make sure that it has the, a rounded edge on the end, and then you'll want a cross peen, and it should be of substantial size. If you have a very sharp, uh, kind of a small little taper on the end of that, you're gonna wanna redress that so that you have a nice flat-ish spot on the end of your cross peen, uh, and, and should be of a more substantial uh, width. So let's get into this. The barb, is where we're, I'm gonna start and it should hold the latch in place. So that means that this needs to be of substantial enough size that it doesn't work its way out. If a sheep or a cow is leaning up against it, you don't want them to be able to bounce this loose. So we want a good size barb, which means if we're starting with 3 8 material, we need to do something to bump that up. Now, anytime you're adding more material, you can upset it, push, you know, take a short heat and push it back into yourself. And I suppose you can start bigger and forge it down to the three eighths round. But I'm going to show you an option that involves folding and welding. And a regular nick and fold, um, you nick the material, you, you bend it back so the bend goes away from the nick and you get this little two-tiered thing here that you then weld. If you do that for this gate latch, you'll end up with a gate latch, but it gets kind of weedy. Like this isn't as substantial as what I think we're going to need for the gate latch. So where did that material go? You had two three eighth inch round bars that you put one on top of each other and it ended up with something like this. Well, the clue is in the round. The round bars, one on top of each other, leave a, quite a bit of space that gets forged down onto itself. So we need to do something about that gap. So the solution, fold it twice. The first nick and fold will be your filler material. And then the second nick and fold will wedge that filler material in between and give you this more substantial looking bar. 
So in the filler works. So here's one with some filler material in it and here's without. To do that, to do that, we are going to start with a chisel point taper. Start with a short taper, um, not long, just a very short taper. And that's gonna account for what we all know is gonna happen if you hit on a, on a piece of metal, it grows in width as that taper evolves. So we want to narrow it first, turn it 90 degrees, and you can see the narrowing now on the sides, and then start your taper. Start with this angled a little higher, drop this a little, about 10 degrees to get our final taper. Finish that off back to about three quarters to an inch, and you do want this rather slim at the end. So you should be working at the far side of the anvil. So you can angle your hammer. This is up slightly 10 degrees and the hammer can hit this and still have this corner still has some space to go. So make sure that you're on the far end to make this a uh, very pointy tip. Now we're gonna create that filler material and we're gonna use that by taking our rod, here's the taper we made. We're gonna perch it on the end of the anvil and it'd be nice if you had something with a good 3 8 inch radius on here. This radius, if you don't have it on your anvil, you know, you can always redress your anvil to get it there or use a bottom swedge uh, uh, in your hardy hole. That's another option but you're gonna have it on the edge and the most of the bar you're working with is gonna be off the anvil. Don't make the mistake of turning this the other way. The divot won't be in the right place. You want this, just this little tip on the anvil with the sharp edge right where the taper ends. Angle this about 45 degrees and then just whack that a good couple times and you will end up with a nice little divot in the end of your taper. So basically you've taken the material, squished it out to the side, and this is your filler material. Now that you have your filler material ready to go, I want you to nick this right at the edge of your divot. Not, we don't need any parent stock involved in this. We just need the filler material. So nick it right at the divot and go ahead and bend that over on the far side of the anvil. If this isn't hot enough, this is gonna tear and it's not gonna go cleanly. Also, you'll, this bar will bend up, which a little bit of a clue, if your bar is bending, it's not hot enough. Get a nice hot, get it nice and hot and then go ahead and fold that over, bend it all the way back onto the parent stock. Now that you have that, you turn it over, bring that up, to right up to the edge of the anvil, that tip comes right up to the far side of the anvil. And I want you to nick it right above that tip. And that'll start this bending over and then you can knock it the rest of the way, bringing it all the way over and making this nice little sandwich. We've got our three eighths inch round bars with some filler material in between. These edges all along here are something that should be concerning you early and often as you do this project. So your next step will be to clean up this edge a little bit by turning it upside down. Again, far side of the anvil, which means you're leaning way over with your hammer to bring some blows in, in that same plane as you want this folded edge to be, and that'll sharpen up all these corners. You're now ready to weld this. And you should all have, if you're following along in the curriculum, and I don't know where everyone is in the curriculum, but you should have welded by now uh, before you're doing this gate latch. So I'm not gonna go deep dive into welding, but just a quick refresh. These are gonna be light blows. You want yellow hot, and it should look wet. So the process is you're going to get it to a hot, yellow hot heat. You're going to flux it, reheat it, and then you're going to tap this into place. And 
At this point, you might be tempted to start working on your taper since you know that's where you're going to go. I would advise against that. It's going to act funny and we want to get a nice big block here welded before we start worrying about the taper. So a flat or slight angle to your hammer is best. You're going to hammer the uh, outside, like where the fold is, and then maybe tap the top, turn it over. If you still have that nice wet look to it, hit the other side. And then if it continues to look wet, you can start working on the sides. Make sure that you bring it to the near side so you're protecting this parent stock while you're doing this. You should only be forging on the bar. Um, if it, if at any time you lose your welding heat right back in the fire and get that welding hot, all these creases are going to go away with this particular maneuver. So if this is hot and wet and you blend all those in with your hammer, again, these aren't, you don't want forging blows. We want welding blows so that we can get all that blended in nicely. So here's our weld so far. And again, I want you to watch these edges. We want this to be nice and flat when we're done. So this, once your weld in is, once you're confident of your weld or you're happy with it, you can get that up again to welding temperature and dress up this inside edge on a sharp section of your anvil and clean that up a little bit. And then that'll clean up this edge too. So you'll end up with a little more of a rectangle. Once you've got that nice and cleaned up, you're happy with your weld, you can start your taper. And the easiest way to do that is going to be to use a cross peen. Uh, angled hand, like, you know, like normally you would make a taper with angling and bringing this up. Well, you got this big blob that's going to distort this part of your bar. So using the cross peen kind of bypasses all that. And the, the key here is to keep the cross peen perpendicular to your, to your barb, to your gate latch. And also notice this peen, how nice and fat that is. You do not want a skinny peen to do that. You're just going to end up making little divots in here that you can't get rid of. We want a nice wide peen, softened edges to get all that tapered down. And the best way to keep this perpendicular is to swing that material hand in underneath your hammer. Now everything, the cross peen is perpendicular to your work. Once you've got that forged down to a uh, taper or uh, a small, smallish edge here, I wouldn't go past an eighth of an inch at this point. You want that blunt at the end. And then you can clean up any of these edges uh, with your hammer and matching the angle with your hammer. Turning it upside down like this is going to prevent some of this bending on the bar. This move might cause this bar to bend a little bit, so be careful with that. And don't, don't make this too pointy at this point. I mean, it's a gate latch, not a weapon. So let's, let's keep the edges dull. Now you're ready to dress the top of the barb. Again, we're worried about this being flat right from the get-go. You've already done this maneuver a couple times by now. Uh, you might have to quench the tip if this is a little more wonky looking than this particular one, uh, but flatten this, which will also dress this and rotate this from side to side. You could see this got rotated to the right and then rotated to the left. Everything held, parent stock held flat on the anvil while you're hitting this edge to try and clean up all those inside edges. Dress your sides uh, if you need any more, especially after moving this, um, fussing with this bit and this bit, you might have created some little lips in there. Dress all those down. If you have any more blending to do, uh, go ahead and, and try to weld that in. And, and all of this should be done at a pretty good heat. You don't want to be dressing this cold at this point. 
So chamfer all your edges and now you can do some planishing. And if you have the material, like this is pretty substantial, you can see it's pretty much the same as the three eighth inch bar. So we got a good amount of barb here. If you have the material, flatten this end. And honestly, that's just for aesthetics. It just looks a little better. So now we have a finished barb. You want a barb that's at least half the width of this three eighth inch round bar that it's gonna go around on that tenon or the, the tenon on the plate or the keep, if you will. So we've got our good three eighths of material here. And now we are ready to bend the hook and the eye into place. We have our drawing, which shows us all the dimensions. And what it doesn't tell us is where to cut this. And you will need to cut this before you can continue. So we need to know exactly how long that parent stock needs to be. I'm going to start with the hook. And we're just going to break it down into little pieces. So we've got our bend. And the convention that I would recommend for uh, any bend is use the diameter of your material. In this case, we've got three eighths. We have a little straight spot here, and I'm going to call that out as half this, which is three quarters according to the drawing. So we know we've got a pre bend that's half the three quarters or three eighths plus the three quarters. And we can add all that together, plus we need to calculate this half circle. And then we would add one, two, three, all these four things together. And then we'll know how much material we need for the hook. So if we're going to calculate this half circle, I'm going to start with a circle and divide it by two to get my half. The circumference of this circle is what we need. And the formula for that is pi times the diameter. So all we're gonna do is take pi times the diameter over two. Well, it's telling us how much that in ID is, the interior diameter is. And since we know that we have to use the neutral axis. Let me back up a little bit. This inside edge has less distance to travel. This outside has longer distance to travel. So the only measurement that doesn't change when you bend it is that neutral axis or the middle of your bar. We are gonna use two halves of the middle of our bar, which is a hole. So all we need to do is take pi, which I'm just going to use three. We don't need to worry about the 0.14. We're not machinists. We're blacksmiths. So three for pi times one, the interior diameter, plus the width of your bar, or these two halves, which make a hole. Divide that by two, and you get two and a sixteenth. Plug all that in, you get three and nine sixteenths inches, or three and five eighths. Now let's turn our attention to the other end of the latch. We got an allowance for the eye and the shaft. The shaft is a given, it's three inches. We've got our bend, which is our three eighths. And then we need to calculate our circle, which is called out here at seven eighths. So plug it in all into our formula. There's three, our pi, seven eighths plus three eighths gets us three and three quarters. And then we can add our three eighths and three inches, add all that together, and you get 10 and three quarters. Now, I found that I just needed a little more here on the, the hook end to get this to be long enough. My shafts were coming out a little short, so I added just a little bit, and I make one bend at three and three quarters this bend at three and three eighths, and then I cut the bar off at 10 and seven eighths or another three and three quarters. So working from the top of the hook, you're gonna mark out those three things. You're gonna sever this bar from the stock 
Oh, here's the picture, just marching all that out with the uh, rule. And I'm gonna make, you're gonna make center punch marks. It's easier to use a V swage in your anvil, or you can go over to the step and wedge it in there. But um, if you have one of these, it's quite handy to use for your center punch mark. And then we're gonna cut it from the parent stock. Now my barb is over here. If I angle this so that the piece I'm left with has a straight edge, and by angling my chisel, I can achieve that. I can get a nice stretch, straight edge here. There's less cleanup. I do want to file off that little bit of the rag after you cut it off, but other than that, you should be ready to bend. And obviously, at this point, you're going to need some three eighths inch tongs. So starting with the eye. The eye is going to be easier to hold with your tongs than the hook. So we're going to bend that first. We're going to lay that off the far side of the anvil, but pull back a little bit from the edge. You'll see the edge is here. I got a nice rounded edge on my anvil. Here's my center punch mark. And I'm coming back to where I'm on the anvil or just at the top edge of the radius of the, that soft edge of my anvil. The material is going to push away from you as you bend it by hitting it here. So get ahead of it, outsmart it by pulling it back towards you a little bit. So now you want to get out your, your nice rounded ball peen. And you want to be bending, not forging. And you want to come over the anvil a little bit so that you can get here and back here, but always keeping space under here. If you're hitting against resistance or the anvil, you're forging. You want to be bending. And it has a different sound, too. And if, you're, if you haven't listened for that, I would even advise you to go do that. Do some hitting on the anvil, listen to what it sounds like, hitting over the air, and you will hear the difference and, and train yourself to go rut row. I am forging right now when I want to be bending because it doesn't sound right. So we're going to take our ball peen, hit as close to this edge as you can and without forging. And you'll notice that inertia in motion here keeps this bar straight. So as you bend this, this bar is going to stay straight for you, which is advantageous to our next steps. Once you have this bend and take that to a good, I don't know, 80 degrees, you want to make it pretty tight because that'll prevent that teardrop shape on the interior of your eye later. Now we're going to turn it around. We're going to make another bend at the tip. The tip is something that you can't get to later, so do it now. As you get to the very end of that tip, uh, you might find that you do forge or damage it just a little bit to get that moved over. Go ahead and clean that up right away. But you'll notice that these bends should mirror each other and this middle bit is still fairly straight. Now we're ready to turn this in the middle. We've got our ends taken care of and we're gonna turn it on the middle. So starting with the part closest to the shaft or closest to the smith, we're gonna lay that over an area of the bit that most matches that internal diameter that you want, that seven eighths. And then we're going to hit, drop the hand, hit, drop the hand so that you're working it slowly around. I don't wanna see you chasing this around with your hammer. I'd rather see the material hand drop down and you hitting in the same comfortable spot that you started in. Once you've gone as far as you can using that maneuver, because your hand will be pretty low down here, turn it over and come back the other way. Only this time you're going to hit, and again, notice all the air. This is being held tight up against the bottom of that horn by the smith. So tight up against there on, on the bottom and hit where you have no resistance. And then now the ham, the, the, 
uh, material hand is going to come up. So hammer blows are the same. You change the position of this on the horn, and you can go back and forth with that till you've got it fairly closed. To get that very end closed up, you're going to turn it upside down. And again, always looking for air under here. So you want this to have some place to go. We don't want to forge it. We want to bend it. Upward pressure, straight down. And you might even want to use the heel of the hammer. Notice the angle changed from flat to a little heel heavy if the smith's over here. And say you get all that done and you still need to fuss a little bit with this or you didn't get quite closed, heat it all up, but quench the parts you like and then take that over to a corner of your anvil and tap it from this edge. And I mean tap it. This could close up your eye right quick and now you'll have to open it back up and start, start over a little bit. This is a very, uh, a very heavy move here. Now we're ready to turn the hook and you're going to start the same way you did with the eye, but in this case, we can't really do it over the edge of the anvil. We're going to have to do it over the bick because, well, the eye is going to be in the way unless you have a really narrow anvil. So turn the hook. You've got your initial bend in it, doing the same maneuvers we just did with the eye and then giving yourself a lot of room. You're going to start bending the, hit, the hook over the tip of the anvil that, again, matches that interior diameter that you want. And it's the same maneuvers where you're hitting in the same spot and um, this hand drops as you go. You might have to chase it around a little bit as this gets closed up. Uh, the smith's now way over the top with the hammer coming back towards the barb to close this up. And we want to end up with this three eighths of an inch below the shaft of that latch. At some point in all this bending, you may have ended up with a twist. You can correct that by hitting any high sides flat on the anvil, or you could take it over to the post vise and correct any bad twisting that way. But it's easy to correct. And by positioning it so any high side is on the up on the anvil and that you would hit the daylight out of it. And you can see a little bit there that's being gotten back into place and correcting any twisting. So a little more on correcting some issues because some of these things might happen to you. These are some pictures of some gate latches that folks did that they needed to correct before they could pass. So I thought I would show them to you. And I did some funny little graphics here. So hopefully you can understand what I'm trying to depict. You've got the horn or the bit here, and then this is where the hammer blows would come. So in this case, we have a latch that ended up way above where we want it to be. We want it three eighths of an inch below that line. So this latch should be down here. So the best way to attack that or correct that would be to position this with pressure this way and use your hammer to put the bend where you want it to be. This bend is too close to the barb. We want that bend back here. At some point, you might have to straighten this out, but I'm going to show you that in the next slide. So you would hammer this around as if you were creating that bend fresh. This latch has rounded edges where they should be straight. And the easiest way to do that is downward pressure on the horn here, hammer blows here on the shaft will straighten this bit out and create a nice sharp bend here. This bend is very, very lax. And then the next thing, oh, and I also want to mention that this got a little forged here and there's a crack there. So the weld, this, this is going to create even more of a cold shunt. And eventually that's going to work its way down where this barb is going to fall off. So that's something that you would want to do over um, and correct this even before you started bending. 
Now here we've got some more correcting issues. If you were starting a new bend here and ended up with a curve over here, the best way to straighten out that curve is using this horn as a fulcrum hitting here. So you're coming way over the anvil to hit here. It's gonna kick this leg out and it's gonna make this straight. And that's what we're looking for. Uh, this particular latch, even if you made it straight, I, I, I'd probably ask the student to give it another go because it got way over forged here. You can see how thin this bit is compared to our parent stock. So this was, this is what happens when you're forging, not um, bending. So we've got our gate latch, we've got our final measurements, one inch di diameter with that three H eighth of an inch clearance down there at the bottom. So any questions so far? I didn't see anything in the chat or otherwise. So I'll show a little video of doing that using that Mr. Volcano. I put the angle iron there to hold my bricks in place. And I use, I think it's like three inch or four inch angle iron. All right, so we're starting, we're getting some material out of the way so that we can do our taper. And we know it's gonna grow wide, but now it's not gonna grow as wide and we've got our short taper. This is gonna create our filler material using the divot on the, making the divot on the edge of the anvil using a nice rounded spot. And now we've got filler. Cutting that to not include any parent stock, getting it nice and hot, bend that over, flatten it back onto the parent bar. This is our second nick, and I got pretty close to the end there. You could even get closer to this tip before you bend it. So here's our second nick and fold. We're going to make our little sandwich. Turn it over again, clean up all this edges that drives that wedge into that crease and cleans up this outside spot. So now we're welding. Notice how wet that is. As long as it's wet, you're gonna be welding. Holding it off the near side so that I'm protecting that parent stock on the side too. All of this is at a welding temperature and you can tell because it's wet. Cross peen, parallel, getting that taper started. And once we've got that to where we want it, clean up all the sides. And that's just welding in or blending in those lines along the side. Now we're measuring, I'm measuring out where all of my bends and where I'm gonna sever the bar from the parent stock. So leaning it back just a little bit to try and get that straight edge on that severed spot. Starting with the eye, so you're gonna have the severed edge away from you. And my center punch mark is right over there. Could have got a little closer, so I'm just cleaning up that tightness of this bend over the big. Now we're ready to close it all up. So you can see that most of this got quenched. 
And that's that little maneuver is helping to tighten up that bend a little bit. Turn it over, working on the hook. Get that initial bend. You wanna keep this straight as you work. So straighten that, that'll help define that edge. Close as you can to that horn. And then again, that tight, so holding it down on the anvil and hitting here helps to sharpen that up a little bit. And there we have our gate latch. Okay, not hearing any questions. Anybody have anything? We're all still here. <laughs> I see you anyway. Okay. I'm going to go on and just go through the pointed staple um, with just a couple variations. You may have already made one of these. It's early on in the curriculum, um, but I'll go over that here for you. So first question is, how much parent stock? We need to cut a little piece uh, and taper the two ends and then bend it. So our tapered ends need to be one and three quarters of an inch. And the best way to figure out how much parent stock is needed is do a test piece. The test piece can be accomplished by taking some round bar, putting a center punch mark um, at some point, two inches is sufficient, that's what happened here. Um, and then making your taper that's drawn back to an inch and three quarters. Once that done, you just take the measurement of the end of your taper to your center punch mark. That's how much you did not use. Subtract that from your initial measurement and you'll find out you used about, uh, an, about um, two inches of material in this case, since we had an inch left over and we started with two inches. So it needs each side, each taper needs two inches of parent stock. Then we just need to measure out the rest of it. We have a little straight bit and then we have another half circle. You already know how to do a half circle. The um, interior diameter is that three eighths. The neutral axis gets us a whole interior diameter of the three quarters plus the three eighths, we take that by three and then we divide that in half to get our half circle. All that together gives us one and three quarters for the bend, about a half an inch of straight on each side and then two inches for the taper, start with four and three quarters of an inch. Now you might wanna do your own tests. I mean, you're happy to use these measurements if you want to, but do your own test just so you get used to doing that sort of uh, computation. So now we're gonna taper both ends and do make them square tapers. Um, the, uh, you're gonna put it in wood and these are pretty chunky. You'll use your gimlet to get them started, but the square is helpful to that end. Uh, keep them both in the same plane. And that is a little trickier than it might seem um, you can always twist the middle, right? No one's gonna know. So when you have the straight bar with your two tapers, make sure that they're in the same plane. When you go to bend them, I'm gonna recommend that you do that on the diamond or with a corner up. And if you're using V-bit tongs, it's just gonna happen naturally because that's the position. It's gonna, the tongs are gonna be straight in your hand and then that'll be up. The corner will be up. But what that gets you is the ability to straighten these legs out when you're finished with your bend. You can see if these were on a different plane, you couldn't get in. You could do the one side. You couldn't do the, the insides unless they were on this diagonal. So you put your tapers in place and you can see here holding them with the V-bit tongs, this corner's already up. Start to work the one side and it's the same maneuver over air, you're bending, 
hit straight down, drop this hand, get that bend started, turn it around, do the other side and slowly work your way on the two sides to where you have a U shape. If at any time these get bent, you know how to straighten those out now. You put the, the um, curve up in the air, you put this up against the anvil and you're gonna hit that so that it kicks that little leg out straight or since you did it on the diamond, you can go do that on the side of your anvil too. So that is all I have for you. Uh, we can move on to Becky. Uh, 